Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks. And today's project is we're going to redo this pair of Alan Edmonds Dalton boots. Um, this is in Shell Cordovan. Basically, Shell Cordovan is, um, is the hindquarters of the horse hide, which is a lot more durable than the calfskin and a bit more expensive, too. So, this particular customer found us online and uh, he printed out a couple of pictures of some ideas the way he'd like the repair to go and some directions and um, once we finish with it it'll be exactly how we ordered it so anybody wants to get their shoes recrafted repaired you're welcome to drop me an email and um, let me know what you have in mind and we'll see what we can do all right let's get started so in my last video <clears throat> a couple of uh, viewers asked me to do more detail and see me work actually on on the boots or shoes um, I'll try to show you guys everything that I that I know unfortunately I can't show you everything because it'll be two days long of video watching me repair shoes anyway we first start off with the top lift now Alan Edmonds has a pretty cool heel block this is the heel block we took the top lift off obviously I score a line right in between the top lift and the sole just to release that glue so it'll be a little easier to remove the heel block or heel base. Uh. Now the heel base is basically made out of fiberboard and a thin piece of leather right here. If you notice, one side of the heel base is thicker than the other. Well this side is on the inside of the boot here, which is higher, and it gives you a bit of arch support. I think it's pretty cool. So when you're stepping down, when you're stepping down on it, the arch side is a little bit higher to give you a little bit more support. All right. Now we're going to remove the the sole. Now this particular model has a midsole to it too, which is that metal piece right there. Outer sole, middle sole, midsole, and the welt, which is the base of the boot. Now some people, they'll sand the stitches down, and they'll pull the sole off like that. I mean, there's lots of ways of doing it. Depends on depends on how you like to do it. I've been doing it like this for a while, so might as well continue it. Alright, once the sole comes off, you take the midsole off. Now you have the inner working of the shoe. So we're going to remove that cork, we're going to recork the whole thing for the customer. Alright, let's continue. Now what most, uh, well, not sh I shouldn't say most, some people do they'll put the foam in there instead of the cork or some people put paper cardboard I mean hell whatever they could find get their hands on they'll put it on so if you look at this see how the cork is compressed that's what it used to be that thickness so over time that gets compressed and takes the shape of your foot and it breaks in and it becomes more comfortable so when you have a pair of shoes that you get resold, sometimes it'll feel a little different because you're so used to that worn out feeling that whenever you put new soles on, you've got to kind of go through the breaking period. And it's a temporary discomfort. Well, I shouldn't even say discomfort. It's just a temporary feeling, different feeling. 
until you wear a couple of times and the shoe tends to break in again. All right, now we're going to start pick the stitches. These stitches are right here on the welt. This is the welt of the shoe. We're going to start taking those stitches apart. Now this is a this seems to be a big issue among some viewers about the cork. <clears throat> now the manufacturers will have a product called hot cork. It's actually a machine that heats up the cork and it becomes like a little gooey and they they squirt it on here and then they flatten it out, right? So the idea of this cork whether it's hot cork or a cork comes in a sheet or a cork that is pre-cut like um, let's see like these for example cork is cork okay and the idea of that replacing the cork is basically filling this void right here okay because there's a little bit of a gap right there between the welt, this is called the ribbon, to the other side. So you want to fill that make this all nice and even. Now, as far as the footbed is concerned, this is the footbed. This is what you're stepping on when you're wearing the boot or the shoe. That forms to your feet. The ball of the foot, the big, uh, your big toe and your little toes, and the heel. So all that is shaped to your foot. When you recork it, that doesn't necessarily change. Now, it makes it a little bit flatter, but the shape doesn't change. Now, we're going to put this, once we put the sole on, we're going to put this in the press to kind of flatten that down. But no matter what, it's very difficult to get rid of those bumps. You can flatten it down a little bit, but it's not going to be straight like it's brand new unless this footbed is replaced. Okay, so today's cork, we have a sheet like this. We're going to cut out and glue in there. All right, now you should replace the cork. Uh, sometimes even though it looks like it's in good shape, which this was when I took it apart, but it literally crumbled as soon as I touched it because over time of bending and flexing, it starts to break down and, and flattens down. This is what happens to it. Okay, let's continue. I can never find my tools after cleaning up my bench. So once the cork goes on, okay, we're going to take out these stitches that are on the welt right here. Now, some people, you know, question, they ask me the question, do you replace the welt? Well, it's not really necessary to replace the welt unless this has been beaten up that you can't redo a sole again and restitch it on. This one's going to be replaced because this is not in very good shape, unfortunately. So Goodyear welted shoe, basically you've got the footbed, you've got a ribbon right here, and then you've got the uppers that come in, and then the welt, and everything gets stitched together, and then you cork it like we did with the other shoe. Now, Blake stitch shoe, basically you've got the uppers fold under like this, the sole gets put on, and it stitches from inside the shoe to the outside. The Goodyear welted is stitched from the outside of the shoe, it's called outsole stitching. Okay, those are two different kinds of shoes. I mean, I personally prefer the Goodyear welted one, but it is a little bit heavier than the Blake stitch shoes. Some of them, not all of them. It's more of a little bit of a lightweight uh, design. All right, let's continue. Sometimes we pick the stitches like that. Other times we come from the top and literally pick it one at a time with a um, with a tool like that. Just like a little sharp awl. This is an important part of the job because you don't want to 
restitch the sole again with the second row of stitches and over time you do that the welt will start falling apart we don't want that more work more money it's not necessary <clears throat> alright so we're gonna glue the midsole back on there's nothing wrong with the midsole it's in great shape it's a nice piece of leather and we're gonna reuse that you know most people they don't even take the midsole off they don't even get to the cork you know this is a great business you know but unfortunately not everybody has the heart to be in this business I mean if you don't love what you're doing do something else you know do something that you're gonna love whenever we repair shoes or repair anything else as a matter of fact we try to do the best possible and sometimes we go beyond what we promised the customer that we're gonna do because simply we love what we're doing and if the item needs a little more attention then then you do it it's that simple well it should be that simple unfortunately not for everybody all right so once we let that dry <clears throat> now this customer asked for JR Souls JR Souls uh, stands for John Rendenbach this company's been around for I believe 125 years and uh, well it says 140 years my fault basically it takes them 12 months to tan the leather old-fashioned way and um, and the leather is very dense therefore it's, it's very durable now we pay a premium for these but you know what they're worth it now there are different sizes of, of soles that people use this particular one is 1011 1011 is not the size of the sole but the thickness okay um, there's 7 8 8 9 9 10 10 11 I, I think 11 12 if I'm not mistaken but after this 10 11 it becomes very thick and I, I don't really I don't usually usually use the thickness just 10 11 will be just fine it's more than what most people use so once the once the glue is applied to the midsole what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut these soles down I'm going to use the old sole to make it a template pattern. This is just for aesthetics, that's it. I want that JR sole to be in the center of the of, of the shoe basically of the sole. I mean, I'm, it, my OCD kicks in when it's when it's off a little bit right or left, so I use the old one basically to make a pattern and then stamp the um, Alan Edmonds stamp on there. All right, let's continue. We're going to remove the nails from the old base. Now the idea behind this base, I know it's just a regular heel base, but it's got it's got a lot of different um, facts about it. Now remember I told you guys one side was higher, right? So there's a thin piece of rubber heel, rubber here, which everything gets nailed down to the shoe and then the top lift gets glued onto here now most of the time I only glue my top lifts on I don't put nails on top now I think that if you prep that surface well enough the glue holds on there you don't need any nails securing that top lift to that base so basically um, we're gonna do the same way we're gonna keep this some people remove this thin rubber but the problem with that is that once you remove it, the fiberboard is exposed. Fiberboard is made out of basically it's paper over time. Um, it will just kind of fall apart. So if you're gluing a top lift to the fiberboard base, that's why people nail it because the glue doesn't hold very well because that top layer of that paper might just peel off and fall off. So it's important to keep that thin rubber just like the manufacturer has designed it that way. Once the midsole's on there, we're going to press the edges. 
that kind of uh, tightens the weld to the midsole. Gets rid of all the air pockets there. Just tightens that up. All right. So I've got the sole cut. Somewhat the shape of the boot. Now this is a little bit larger, of course. We'll just trim it down once we glue everything together. I mark where the heel base goes, so I'll know where to stamp the Allen Edmonds stamp right there. All right, and that's coming up next. All right, so this is my embossing machine. This thing is older than me and probably some of you guys watching. Basically, it's called hot stamping. This thing is very hot. That's your plate right there. Basically, your plate is um, consists of aluminum block with the design of the logo. And once it gets hot, with the leather down, try to center it as best as possible. It's just eyeballing it. There's no, I, mean, I guess I can measure it if I really want to. And then once it's there, press it down. Now I do a lot of uh, embossings on this machine, like wallets and pad folios and and all sorts of stuff, name tags, bags, and that's it. That's what you call embossing machine. It's actually debossing because it's being pressed. Embossing is raised letters, but most people know it as embossing, so we'll correct them when they come in sometimes. <laughs> This is um, this is called a dovetail pattern. This is again JR Souls. It's the same style as the original. If I can put them back together, there you go. Okay. Now you see how the spacing is not even on both sides. I know it's just aesthetics, but it just annoys me when that happens. I've done that plenty of times before, by the way. As much as uh, you plan it out, so you want to try to see if you can space that out evenly. Same amount of space on both sides of that dovetail pattern. So let's hope it stays that way once I assemble it to the heel. All right, let's continue. Now another small detail about heel bases. Now most of the time what I'll do at this point secure these two together okay and then I'll sand this this is called the breast of the heel that's the inside part I'll sand that nice and smooth so when it's finished you don't have any rough sandpaper marks so with the Allen Edmonds you really can't do that because if you assemble this together then it goes onto the shoe. You've got to nail it from the inside of the shoe to secure the heel block back on. And with Allen Edmonds, you can't do that because, let me see, this particular kind anyway. Some of them have heel linings on, and this one doesn't. You can't nail that because there's no nails there. The nails are only are nailed from the bottom on the heel block. Okay, so. How do we get around those rough marks on the inside here? Because the sandpaper that we use is 24 grit to sand that heel breast. It's not a very fine smooth. So what I'll do is before I assemble this heel base back onto the shoe, I'll take these two and sand them together smooth. 
and then attach the heel block and then come back and put this on top then you don't touch that area at all because it's already been prepped smooth even all right let's continue all right it's time to secure the sole onto the shoe now I spray that with water just to soften that up a little bit so it'll take shape to the shoe now got to make sure that everything else is centered before, you know while you're gluing it just eyeballing it I mean I could again I could sit there and measure it but eyeballing it is okay Now remember earlier I showed you guys pressing the edges on that machine. Now most people do that, right? But the problem is that machine leaves marks on the bottom of the leather, which which I don't like at all. I think it just cheapens the job. But most people, you know, they don't care. They'll, they'll do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze the leather sole and the welt and the midsole together to get rid of all the gaps and the edges. So what I do is I've got my last here I've tapered the side down to a point I just stuck it underneath the welt and I hammer it together so what this is doing basically is getting rid of the air pockets on the edges where you're going to get a good seal now we're going to put the sole the shoe or the boot whatever we call it in a press leave it there for a couple of hours so that glue inside has a chance to cure and and hold pretty good all right let's continue all right so um, this machine is a sole press right so basically it comes with different size feet you put it inside the shoe you line it up here Then you turn this down, which is basically this piece is pushing down on that foot, and then it tightens the sole to the to that base. Now this is, I think this is called Lamac, L-A-M-A-C press. Now this particular model was heated model right you see all these wires but unfortunately down the road it got cut off and it's no longer heated I'm sure I could rig it up to heat it up again but this works just fine now do I do every pair of shoes like this not all of them some that you know I need to put a little more attention to my everyday jobs I have a hydraulic press that I tre you know I press the soles on, but this one gives a little bit of a better bond I think for the with the glue so it can cure it can cure a little better. I'll just leave it in there for a little while. Gives me a chance to take a, a little coffee break or a little hookah break, lunch break whatever break I want. Just make sure that it's positioned properly so when it dries it doesn't look deformed. This one's being a little stubborn. And that's it. We'll leave that there for a while. Alright, let's continue.